purpose of this video is to discuss ways to improve human relationships in crime laboratories. We're going to start with the notion of human capital, especially human capital in forensic laboratories. Human capital, simply stated, is the collective brain trust born from your forensic scientists. In any organization, it is believed that human capital is a primary determinant of organizational performance. We believe that human capital is especially important in the context of forensic laboratories. And indeed, over the last 10 years, there has been a wealth of business press published on the very topic of human capital as it relates to organizational performance. So given our human capital focus, we present research involving forensic scientists and some recommendations that come from that research. The specific research is that of the Foresight Survey, a survey containing over 80 questions looking at a number of behaviors, attitudes, opinions from forensic scientists around the United States and also in Canada. We have collected to date over 1,200 surveys from forensic scientists. The outcomes of interest we were particularly interested in were what we call lab citizenship behaviors and that is the extent to which the forensic scientists helps others. More specifically, the extent to which they go above and beyond the call of duty in helping others. It may be a fellow scientist, the unit manager, or even a lab director in making the workplace a better or more productive or higher performing workplace for everybody. A similar construct that we're interested in is the forensic scientists output of knowledge sharing, the extent to which they share knowledge in the spirit of helping others, helping the lab director or other scientists and again making the whole lab a better workplace for everybody and a more productive laboratory at the same time. So given our interest on our outcomes of uh, forensic scientists outcomes, helping behaviors and knowledge sharing behaviors, we asked what is the major determinant of this type of behavior and the research told us and intuitively it makes a lot of sense that job satisfaction or morale to some extent drives helping behaviors and knowledge sharing behaviors. Job satisfaction was the major driver of everything we looked at in determining these positive outcomes from forensic scientists. So we look at predictors of job satisfaction. Job satisfaction, a construct that empirically we know from this research is directly linked to desirable behaviors from forensic scientists. So we ask the question, what are the major drivers of job satisfaction? In other words, what can we manage? The first item of importance is that of task significance. The greater the significance attributed to one's job, the greater the job satisfaction. And what we mean by significance is the extent to which the forensic scientist believes his or her job matters to other people, not with only within the laboratory, but outside the laboratory as well. Another major determinant of job satisfaction was the forensic scientist's perception of their leader or of their immediate supervisor in terms of genuineness. How genuine, the, the more genuine they feel that their supervisor is, the greater job satisfaction they'll report. Efficiency was also a major determinant of job satisfaction. The greater extent to which the scientist felt his or her job was streamlined, had few unnecessary steps, led to higher levels of job satisfaction. Autonomy, the greater the extent to which the forensic scientist felt that his or her job has degrees of freedom, has latitude in exercising his or her own judgment on the job, leads to job satisfaction. And last but certainly not least is the greater the extent to which the forensic scientists said they agree with or they understand the strategic vision of the laboratory as articulated by the lab director or top management team, the greater connection they had between their vision and their own understanding of that vision, the greater the degree of job satisfaction. A quick definition of job satisfaction, it's the extent to which people like or don't like their jobs and that varies widely, not only within the lab, but from lab to lab. And we're looking at the major determinants of job satisfaction. And much to our surprise, the major determinant from our research of job satisfaction 
was the scientists report that they understood the purpose, vision, mission, and strategy of the lab, usually as articulated by the lab director or maybe by the top management team. We feel this is an esprit de corps or being on the same page effect. The greater the extent to which they were part of the organization's strategy and mission, the more they were uh, satisfied with their job. Another major predictor of job satisfaction is that of autonomy. Autonomy is a perception of freedom and independence. It's the degrees of freedom, if you will, that a scientist believe he or she has in her job. Discretion to schedule work or make decisions in performing tasks. Autonomy would not be a situation where one feels they have someone looking over his or her shoulder at all times and feels overly micromanaged. Autonomy, again, was a major determinant of job satisfaction in this sample. Another major determinant of job satisfaction is the extent to which the forensic scientist felt that his or her job was efficient, streamlined, and without a lot of red tape or unnecessary steps. Leadership was very important as well. We don't talk about how much the subordinate likes the supervisor. What we studied in this study is a, is a hotly uh, discussed topic in the leadership literature called authentic leadership, how real or genuine the forensic scientist felt his or her supervisor was or reported them to be. Authentic leadership defined is a leader who promotes a number of positive uh, attributes in the workforce or with a subordinate. For example, a positive psychological and ethical climate, promoting ethics or believing in ethics greater self-awareness or soliciting feedback and um, understanding feedback from the subordinate is a authentic leader, which leads to job satisfaction. Morals as demonstrated in decision-making by the authentic leader is very important, as is transparency in everything that that leader does is very, very important to the forensic scientist and helps determine their extent of job satisfaction. Last but not least is the amount of task significance one places on their job. And we define this as one's perception that their job has a positive impact not only on other people within the laboratory, but also in the greater community as well. The greater the extent to which the forensic scientists feel that he or she matters, the greater the extent to which he or she reported that they're satisfied with the job. Lastly, we look at lab politics, and lab politics throws a wrench in everything that we've just discussed up to this point. Politics is a very um, subjective phenomenon. You cannot objectively measure politics. It varies from person to person. It's purely subjective. It is the uh, extent to which the forensic scientist feels that there is unwanted, self-serving behavior going on, that pits individuals and groups against each other. It's a job stressor, and it's typically a, a very undesirable uh, stressor for anyone to have. Again, I cannot stress enough the importance that politics is entirely perception, and perception is more meaningful than actual political behaviors because they matter most to the individual lab worker. And we'll discuss a way to manage that in just a few moments. The greater the politics, of course, you would imagine the, the lower the job satisfaction. And indeed, if you took our data and plotted the relationship between job satisfaction and increasing levels of politics, you would find, and we did find, a decreasing relationship between job satisfaction and the greater the extent to which he or she reported politics. Now, why that matters, especially for this research and for our recommendations, is this. We have talked already about improving the strategic vision or understanding of the um, lab worker, or excuse me, of the forensic scientist, increasing his or her autonomy, efficiency, giving that person you know, a more genuine leader should lead to a greater amount of job satisfaction. And indeed, when forensic scientists report there is little to average politics in their workplace, that relationship holds true. In other words, if increasing the understanding of the strategy, the autonomy of the job increases, the job satisfaction, as long as politics are not necessarily perceived to be too high. In those employees or in those forensic scientists who perceive there to be a great deal of politics, 
increasing all of the aforementioned variables would not affect job satisfaction. So what this says is that in a uh, place where a forensic scientist perceives there to be high politics, none of these tools will work in increasing their job satisfaction and something else might have to come into play and help mitigate this perception of high politics. Again, a situation we'll talk about in just a moment, which brings us, of course, to recommendations. Strategic vision, very important determinant of job satisfaction, what to do. Quite often, it's just simply involving the forensic scientist at some phase of strategic planning, whether it be the input gathering or the implementation or the buy-in process of the strategic initiatives that the lab is going to pursue. Increasing autonomy has been shown to increase job satisfaction in lab workers. How can that be managed? You could probably think a number of ways. I want to throw a couple of um, stories that I've got from the field on this on increasing perception of autonomy. I like this one especially. If someone's doing their job well, get out of their way and let them do it. Respect, I think, is very important uh, in increasing autonomy. And the, this final uh, quote kind of dovetails in with the first, if you know, find the type and style of work they want to do. And as long as it meets the goals of the lab, let them work this, this way. Of course, you have to tailor these to your lab. Some work in some cases and, and some won't work. You have to find out what works in your laboratory. Increasing the perception of efficiency might be a tough one. I like this um, quote that came from one of our lab directors especially well, and that is that a lot of times stakeholders, law enforcement, for example, can put a great deal of pressure or abuse the system in imposing their will on having the lab uh, do what they want them to do when they want them to do it or report to them what they want when they want it. And in this case, the lab manager simply reported educating stakeholders about how they work and how they operate helps prevent stakeholder abuse of, of their system, which avails breathing room or the perception of more breathing room to the forensic scientist and hence the sense of efficiency. Also asking the um, forensic scientist what can make your job more efficient or what would you like to see change, even if you can or cannot have that change in their job design, just being heard is of great importance to the forensic scientists. Improving leadership, especially genuine leadership, as we discussed earlier. Genuine leadership is a promotion and a demonstration of ethics by the immediate supervisor. It's soliciting feedback and, and, and acting on feedback when appropriate. It's promoting and demonstrating morals at all times. And at all times, it's also very important to be just and transparent in everything that the leader does with his or her subordinate. Improving task significance. Here's an anecdote that comes from the field as well, where a lab director recognizes uh, employees for a job well done. This is a non-monetary award, and this is just the type of thing that goes a long way in giving an attaboy, a pat on the back, or self-actualization to a forensic scientist. It doesn't cost anything, but goes a long way in helping the employee feel wanted and more importantly appreciated and their work appreciated in, in a greater community. Jobs to speak or talk about interesting cases I've also found to be especially important in letting the forensic scientist be heard uh, and understood that what they're doing is very, very important to others in the lab and also in the community uh, as well. I'll end where uh, I stopped with the empirical presentation of the data. That was how do you reduce lab politics? Well, in so much as that lab politics are a purely perceptual thing that vary greatly from individual to individual, probably one of the most effective ways to reduce the perception of, of lab politics is FaceTime or hearing out each individual lab worker, spending time with them in the trenches, understanding where they're coming from, we think will go a long way in reducing the perception of lab politics, which to the lab worker means everything. You want to reduce lab politics. This ends the video.